Jack and Akinori. Yes, oh. it's an extender. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Alan Partridge moments. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. A socially dangerous creation of Steve Coogan, Alan Partridge is a force to be reckoned with, and for this list, we are focusing on his greatest, most hilarious, most awkward moments. Uh. So, grab your big plate, travel tavern keys, and partridge badged blazer, and let's be appalling. This week's Alan trade is fashion. Number 10, miming to cuddly toy, Alan Partridge, Alpha Papa. Well, I don't go out my heart like this to everyone. Alan has made it clear over the years that he is both a lover of music and of fine automobiles, and the driving gloves that go with them. So, cruising along and miming to the song Cuddly Toy by Roachford is textbook. Leading us into his feature film, Alpha Papa, it's the occasional glances in the mirror to check himself out, fidgety dance moves, and of course, his sudden interest in someone's fog lights that just screams partridge. There's no fog. There's no fog. Number nine, Alan insults the Irish, I'm Alan Partridge. No, no, I'd love to go. <laughs> it amazes me when people say that and it's only 49 quid on a plane. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what puts me off. Faced with two Irish producers who want to make a TV show with him, you'd think Alan would be on his best behaviour. He isn't, of course. Instead, he unleashes a barrage of offensive remarks based on Irish stereotypes. Sunday, bloody Sunday. What a great... really encapsulates the frustration of a Sunday. From referring to the Irish as toothless simpletons, to nonchalantly mentioning and trivialising the Irish potato famine and the IRA, Alan continues to dig a deeper and deeper hole. Sorry about that. You must be... Uh, you must be sick of that. Of what? You know, being blown up, bombs. Number eight, Alan the commentator, the day-to-day. Go! Alan's lent his voice to many occasions, including the riveting Swatham Country Fair, but it's his stint as a football commentator on the day-to-day -day that makes this list. He has and another. Making fun of classic football superlatives, Partridge concocts his own silly catchphrases, including bing bang, stick it in, and eat my goal. His floating head and clear lack of knowledge of the game make this the perfect gig for Alan to unleash his own brand of ridiculousness. Shit! Did you see that? Number seven, Alan's biggest fan, I'm Alan Partridge. I'm just a fan, Alan, that's all. Believe it or not, Partridge actually has some devoted fans, one of which he finds out is a little too devoted. After a fan of his, Jed, does him a favour, Alan agrees to be his friend. But what Alan doesn't realise is that Jed is creepily obsessed with him, so much so that he has his own Alan shrine. I'm really scared. Faced with, well, many faces of himself, Alan tries to escape from Jed, only to be wrestled, headlocked, and forced to be friends forever. In no way, you big spastic, you're a mentalist! <laughs> Number six, a partridge in Paris, knowing me, knowing you with Alan Partridge. None of my British friends will forgive me if I didn't say, we love the Channel Tunnel, but for goodness sake, don't send us any of your rabid dogs. I wonder what a Parisian Alan Partridge clothing line would look like. Ask nobody ever. Still, Alan thought it a good idea to create one. Trying to show off and impress some fashionable guests on his chat show, Alan proceeds to showcase his own unique clothing line, which he calls Sports Casual. It's a look that says, I'm in control of my vehicle. Gallivanting around Paris in his eclectic action-ready stitches, Alan aims to prove what real style is all about. The place, champs -Elysees. The man, Alan Partridge. The look, strolling pastel. Number five, Alan and local farmers, I'm Alan Partridge. Well, I wouldn't eat one of your tomatoes if it came up and said, eat me, oh. which is not unlikely considering all the rubbish you stick in them. For what would eventually lead to having a dead cow dropped on him, Alan interviews the local farmers union leader after making offensive remarks about local agriculture on the radio. Where did I go wrong? Expected to make peace and put the whole thing behind him by apologising, Alan just can't bring himself to do it and instead continues to ridicule local farmers and accuse them of feeding chips to donkeys and beef burgers to swans. Well, if you fill a swan's stomach up with beef burgers, it's full of fat, it'll float better. That's why we do it. Really? No, you complete cretin. I'm just contributing to this total farce. Number four, Dan, I'm Alan Partridge. Are you wearing links? Well, smelt. Voodoo. Java. After making a new friend called Dan, he clocks him when walking through a car park and shouts him in order to get his attention. Dan! Reluctant to give up, he just keeps shouting and shouting and shouting. It's Alan's sheer tenacity that makes this memorable. And just when you think he's given up, he turns right back around again and keeps going. Dan! Number three, Crash Bang Wallop, I'm Alan Partridge. Any epileptics, get out now. <laughs> because statistically one of you is. 
and two of you are gay. In an attempt to show off to some students and their teacher, who just so happens to be his childhood bully, Alan puts on one of his videotapes when invited to give a talk. What a video. As embarrassing as it is hilarious, the video entitled Crash Bang Wallop What a Video features an overweight Alan emphatically presenting and drooling over an attractive woman dressed as a police officer. <laughs> Number two, the Bond moment, I'm Alan Partridge. Ever had someone accidentally ruin something that belongs to you? What about your entire collection of James Bond tapes? Well, Alan has. Stop talking about American things and let's watch the best film ever made. Welcome to America's Strongest Man. Planning a Bond marathon, Alan unfortunately finds that all his tapes have been drenched and ruined with sunny delight, all except The Spy Who Loved Me, which has been taped over with America's Strongest Man. I really wanted to see America's Strongest Man. Well, now you've got Norfolk's maddest man. Determined to keep his Bond dream alive, he decides to act out the entire opening sequence of the film, song and all, in truly emphatic fashion. Nobody does it better, <laughs> and I'm a naked woman in silhouette with a gun. Before we reveal our favourite partridge calamity, here are a few honourable mentions. That's right, I've tried to three years. You're 33? That's right, now. But I thought you... I mean, you look about 14. Well, I'll take that as a compliment, you know. Now, Alan, what's the matter with you? Cone, you take a joke? Oh, f off. <laughs> what? Little pierce my foot on a spike. <laughs> Number one, smell my cheese. I'm Alan Partridge. You are someone who has a proven track record for making mostly bad television programs. That, that's, that's bollocks. No, After fantasizing about meeting the BBC's Tony Hairs regarding a potential second TV series, Alan finally gets his wish, but it doesn't quite go to plan. Can I? No, actually, I'll just repeat the question. Have I got a second series? After pitching some program ideas, including Alan Attack and arm wrestling with Chaz and Dave, Hairs seems unimpressed, prompting Alan to spitball some ludicrous ideas like monkey tennis. If you have any other ideas, I'd, I'd be very interested. Got them here, got them here. Frustrated that he's not getting a second series, Alan loses his temper, grabs the nearest thing he can find, which is a giant block of cheese, and shoves it in Hairs' face. Smell my cheese. Alan, please. Why not? Smell my cheese, oh. mother. Enough, thank you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo UK and subscribe for more great content.